So you thought this channel was gone for good, washed away in 2020's hurdles never to be seen again. Well, think again, because even though it's been a while, the show must always go on. Yes, your one and only New York City List channel is back. Hope you guys are enjoying a beautiful autumn right now, despite the fact that things are still, to say the least, unpredictable. So what's this I keep hearing about New York City being dead? Are we really going to fall for that? I mean, with gorgeous places like this, and this, and awesome views like this, and this, does anyone actually think New York City is going anywhere? Not happening. Sure, things may be a bit on the downturn right now, but it's a part of the reinvention process. Think back to the last few centuries and the countless times we've had to find ways to reinvent ourselves. Over the years, the world has seen much creativity and many innovative ideas come out of New York. Did we all of a sudden lose our creative drive? I think not. So to commemorate and to celebrate the ingenuity here, I've compiled a list of a multitude of things that were born right out of this great big city. Without further ado, here are 21 things invented in New York City. Number one, toilet paper. After centuries of grabbing hay, leaves, wool, corn cobs, and what not to clean up after the bathroom act, entrepreneur Joseph Gaetti came up with the perfect solution. In 1857, he invented medicated sheets of hemp that were designed to wipe one's privates in addition to soothing and preventing hemorrhoids. However, this New Yorker's commercialized product never quite flew off the shelves. At the time, people were just too accustomed to wiping with newspapers and magazines, which cost them nothing. It wasn't until 1871, when another company began selling toilet paper on a roll, that his concept finally took off. Number 2. Credit Cards The first credit card was introduced in 1946 at Brooklyn's Flatbush National Bank by a banker named John Biggins. Only three years later, in 1949, the Diners Club card was also introduced at a New York restaurant when Frank McNamara realized he forgot his wallet. Legend has it that instead of being sent to the kitchen to wash dishes, he negotiated to pay for his dinner by signing for it and promising to pay back the restaurant later. Number 3. Christmas There's a perfectly good reason why New York does Christmas so well. That's because they practically invented it. Most people don't realize it, but the bright festivities associated with modern-day Christmas were almost non-existent prior to the 1800s. In fact, Christmas used to be a very low-key religious event celebrated in only a few households. It wasn't until the mid-1800s that the stories and cartoons of local writers and artists depicting a jolly old Saint Nick were so well received that they put Christmas on the New York map. Santa Claus, public Christmas trees, decorated store windows, poinsettias, and Christmas lights are only some of the ideas first implemented in this magical city of lights. Number 4. The Ambulance New York traffic is well known for its blaring ambulance sirens. Perhaps it's because in 1869, a new way of addressing medical emergencies was invented at none other than Bellevue Hospital. At the time, a medical emergency often meant a long and painful journey to the hospital for those with no means of transportation. But with the invention of these shock-absorbing horse carriages, you no longer had to drag your injured self to the hospital. With Bellevue's introduction of the ambulance, one could get immediate care while still on their way to the hospital. Number 5. Cell Phones in a bold move to take on AT&T, who had previously invented the car phone, a Motorola engineer by the name of Martin Cooper invented the world's first mobile phone. It was here in April of 1973 on 6th Avenue and 54th Street that Martin placed his first call using the prototype for a portable phone the size of a brick. When the first Motorola Dynatac finally went on the market in 1983, it cost consumers $4,000 plus calls at 50 cents a minute. Number 6. The American Musical Okay, so maybe the ancient Greeks were onto something when they included musical elements in their theatrical comedies. And perhaps the roots of modern musical theater do lie in Europe. 
However, you gotta give credit where it's due, because New York City reinvented the entire concept of musical theater. It all started back in the mid-1800s when an era of new theaters and musical theater productions took the city by storm. This new style of theater proved to be so successful that today, whenever one hears the words musical theater, the first thing that comes to mind is, you guessed it, Broadway. Number 7. Mr. Potato Head I personally never had a Mr. Potato Head growing up, but I'm sure there's many of you out there who did. Well, did you know that this same cynical character from Toy Story came straight out of New York? In 1952, George Lerner of Brooklyn invented and patented the first all-plastic Mr. Potato Head in a response to the multitude of kids who preferred to play with the vegetables they didn't want to eat. His invention was based on an earlier kid's toy that used a real potato for the body. Number 8. Air Conditioning they say Brooklyn's cool, but I don't think you realize just how cool. You might take your AC for granted nowadays, but there was a time when everyone just had to suck it up during those excruciating summer heat waves. The world didn't get relief until 1902 when Willis Carrier installed the world's first air conditioner for a printing company in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The rest as you know it is history. Number 9. x lax Yes, your favorite chocolate laxative was invented in 1906 by Brooklyn's Max Kiss. In fact, for decades, the buildings 423 to 443 Atlantic Avenue were used as the company's headquarters and factory. And for more than 50 years, the x lax brand grew to become the nation's most popular over-the-counter laxative. By the 1960s, the company decided to move away to much greener pastures. And in 1981, the buildings were converted to co-ops making it Brooklyn's first factory conversion to residential units. Number 10. Hip Hop This mainstream music genre made its debut as an underground urban movement in the 1970s at the outdoor neighborhood block parties held in the Bronx. DJ Cool Herc, Africa Bambada, and Grandmaster Flash were some of the pioneers of this popular style of music, which focused mainly on rapping and DJing percussion breaks between two record players. Legend has it that Herc's first experiment with record players took place in 1973 at a party held at his apartment at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, marking this building as the birthplace of hip-hop. Number 11. Breakdancing Also hailing from the Bronx is this unique style of dance set to music containing breakbeats. Breakdancing uses different body movements with spins, freezes, and kicks, all of which are done to the rhythm of mostly hip-hop music. Debuting in the 1970s, right alongside Bronx's emerging hip-hop culture, it gained the most notoriety in the 1980s. However, this popular dance style is still quite common today, and you can find dancers all throughout the world showcasing their skills. Number 12. Scrabble if you arrive at the corner of 81st Street and 35th Avenue in Jackson Heights, Queens, you'll come across a unique street sign with numbered points below each letter signifying that this exact location is the birthplace of Scrabble. It was in the year 1938 that this classic American word game was invented by Alfred Mosher Butts and tested in the basement of the community church that sits at this very corner. Number 13. Children's Museums Let's face it, in most museums, you'll find some pretty serious and sterile stuff. Back in the 1800s, if you were a kid with sticky little fingers, this wasn't the place for you. However, the city of New York changed that when they introduced the first children's museum in 1899. Contrary to traditional museums, where you couldn't touch anything, the Brooklyn Children's Museum featured interactive exhibits which allowed kids to learn through activity. Thankfully, we now have children's museums all throughout the world where a kid can just be a kid. Number 14. Minwax We've all come to rely on this famous brand for all of our waterproofing needs. But did you know that it got its start in New York? Yes, your favorite sealant was invented in 1904 by Arthur B. Harrison at his home in Brooklyn. The Minwax company went on to engineer many famous waterproofing projects, including Cleopatra's Needle in Central Park. Number 15. The Tuxedo 
Nothing says upper crusty more than a tuxedo. And in 1886, Pierre Lorillard IV showed up to a prestigious ball held in Tuxedo Park wearing a tailless dress coat, thus receiving quite the attention over his avant-garde style. In case you're unfamiliar with Tuxedo Park, it's an exclusive community in Orange County, New York, where Manhattan aristocrats will spend time in their country estates. The word tuxedo became an official part of the English language due to this new style of formal wear making its debut in Tuxedo Park. However, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Lorillard's tailor was most likely based in Manhattan. So regardless of the name and where he wore it, we all know that that tux came right out of New York City. Number 16. The Foxtrot Speaking of black tie affairs, this popular style of ballroom dance was named after Harry Fox, a classic vaudeville performer appearing in several New York shows. His quick and slow step technique, which was unusual at the time, gained notoriety during the summer of 1914 while performing at the then world-famous New York Theater. The Foxtrot had reached its height in popularity by the late 1930s, but is still a favorite in the world of ballroom dance today. Number 17. The Remote Control It was Nikola Tesla who invented one of the world's first wireless remote-controlled boats. He tested it out at the city's second Madison Square Garden in 1898 and called his creation the Teleautomaton. Honestly, his remote control was just a big wooden box with a lever and telegraph key on top. Unfortunately, at the time, there were many skeptics who scoffed at his invention and stated that it was too weak and flimsy to operate anything larger. Nevertheless, his remote control did pave the way for many future inventors who ended up applying his concept to other types of equipment. Number 18. Brillo Pads Prior to the 20th century, we cooked everything in cast iron. And if you know anything about cast iron, you know the last thing you want to do is scrub them. However, when aluminum pots and pans hit the scenes in the early 1900s, all you wanted to do was scrub them. But we had nothing to scrub them with. Relief finally came in 1917 when a cookware peddler from Brooklyn teamed up with his brother-in-law, a jeweler, and together they developed a cleaning product made from jeweler's soap and steel wool that we now know as Brillo. They manufactured their highly sought-after product right out of a plant in Dumbo located at 200 Water Street. By 1955, the company had moved its operations to Ohio. And today? Well, you should know how it goes by now. The original Brooklyn factory has been converted to luxury condos. Number 19. Baseball Cards Lower Manhattan is definitely the birthplace of the baseball card. It was in 1869 at a sporting goods store on Nassau Street where the first cards emerged. They featured photos of the Cincinnati Red Stockings with an ad for the store on the back. At the time, the cards were given away for free as a means to advertise for local businesses. Comment below if you're one of those who still collect baseball cards today. Number 20. The Cardboard Box Though cardboard and corrugated paper were invented in England, it was Robert Gare, a Tribeca printer and paper goods manufacturer, who by accident invented the folding cardboard box. Though this may not seem like a major feat today, there was a time when cardboard was pretty difficult to fold and cut into boxes. But one fateful day in 1890, Gare discovered that by cutting paperboard and creasing it at the same time with his machinery, he could make prefabricated boxes that could be used for all kinds of packaging. He would later move his operations to Dumbo, where he applied his same technique to corrugated cardboard, which became the moving, shipping, and storage boxes we all use today. And last, we have number 21, the teddy bear. This world-famous toy was named after Theodore Roosevelt in 1903 after newspapers reported that he refused to shoot a bear while on a hunting trip. Inspired by the story, a bed couple by the name of Rose and Morris Mitchum made a stuffed fabric bear in his honor and displayed it with a sign, Teddy's Bear, in their shop window at 404 Tompkins Avenue. It was an overnight success, and they went on to start a successful company manufacturing teddy bears and other toys. Roosevelt himself adopted the original teddy bear and used it as a mascot for his re-election campaign in 1904. This same bear is now a permanent part of the Smithsonian Museum. And that's it for the top 21 things invented in New York City. 
So, tell me, was there anything that I missed? I know there's plenty more. However, I also know you've got things to do, and I wouldn't want to keep you here all day. Anyway, if there's anything else you'd like to add to this list, feel free to respectfully share it with us in the comments below. Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon if you'd like to see more videos about New York City, our favorite city that usually never sleeps, but I guess somewhat needs to take a nap right now. With that said, I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see each other next time.